Are you looking for capital to start a new business or grow an existing business in Africa? Have you tried other alternative sources of funding but failed to raise the money you need? Is funding the biggest obstacle standing between you and that idea, business or project you're so passionate about? In this video, I'm going to introduce you to some of the top international organizations investment funds, platforms, and opportunities that actively give money to entrepreneurs and invest in hundreds of businesses and projects across Africa. Whether you're looking for a grant, a loan, or an equity investment in your business or project, these are the organizations and opportunities you should be targeting. Number 1. Seed Stars Africa Seed Stars is an early stage venture capital fund that invests in high growth businesses that are active in sub Saharan Africa. It is a member of the Seed Stars Group, a venture builder that is based in Switzerland and has invested in businesses and networks in over 40 countries. Every year, Seed Stars sponsors the Seed Stars World Competition, which is a series of local and regional competitions. In emerging markets. Uh, now, the winner of this competition gets the grand prize award of $500,000 to support their business. In 2014, Seed Stars invested $330,000 in Simple Pay, which is a Nigerian startup company that processes payments for online transactions. In 2016, Giraffe, uh, a South African virtual recruitment startup, beat 54 other finalists to win the $500,000 grand prize at the International Pitch Competition in Geneva, Switzerland. In 2018, Ghana's Agritech startup, AgroCenter, won the $500,000 Seed Stars Competition grand prize. To date, alumni of the Seed Stars World Competition have raised more than $250 million in additional funding from investors. So let's look at the upsides of Seed Stars Africa and why you should be interested in this funding source. One upside is that Seed Stars is a great opportunity for entrepreneurs who are building a business that involves technology. Another upside is that even if you don't win the $500,000 grand prize, you still get a lot of benefits from the exposure, the expert feedback, the training, and networking opportunities from Seed Stars. But there are some downsides. And one key downside you need to watch out for is that Seed Stars is a highly competitive source of funding. You will have to compete against hundreds of other entrepreneurs from across Africa. To increase your chances of winning at Seed Stars, you have to be really good at pitching yourself, your ideas, and your business to the panel of judges. Now, one of our students, Maxwell of Queza, learned and successfully applied our pitch techniques to win the regional Seed Stars competition. And one of our students, Anne of Smart Havens Africa, used the same pitch techniques to emerge as a finalist and won a £10,000 prize in the Africa Prize for Engineering Innovation, an international pitch competition organized by the UK's Royal Academy of Engineering. The second funding opportunity I'd like to share with you is the African Women's Development Fund, the AWDF. Now, the African Women's Development Fund is the first pan-African organization that provides grants exclusively to women-owned organizations in Africa. Since the start of its operations in 2001, the AWDF has provided over $17 million in grants to 800 women's organizations in 42 African countries. Now, the AWDF's grants are focused on supporting the initiatives of African women who may not have access to mainstream funding due to capacity, language, location, and marginalization constraints. Okay, so the AWDF gets its funds from several international donors, including the Ford Foundation, Usiwa, and the Hewlett Foundation, 
and also belongs to the International Network of Women's Funds. The AWDF provides grants that range from $8,000 up to $100,000. It finances local, national, sub-regional, and regional organizations in Africa that work towards women's empowerment. Let's look at the upsides. Why should you be interested in sourcing funding from the AWDF? One major upside is that the AWDF provides grants in both small and large amounts up to $100,000 and has a special focus on women and marginalized people who may not be able to raise funds from formal investors and institutions. Are there any downsides? One key downside that you need to watch out for regarding the AWDF is that it only awards grants to organizations and not individuals. So to get a grant from the AWDF, an organization should have been in existence for at least three years. The third funding source that I want to talk about is the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. Now, the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program, also known as TEEP, is backed by a $100 million fund that is targeted at the new generation of African entrepreneurs. The fund was founded by Mr. Tony Lumelu, who is a successful Nigerian banker, entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Every year, the fund supports 1,000 entrepreneurs from across the African continent. Each entrepreneur gets business training, mentorship, networking opportunities, and a non-refundable seed capital of $5,000. Entrepreneurs get an initial seed investment of $5,000 after a mandatory training and mentoring program. They also get another $5,000 that is structured as equity or an affordable loan if your business meets certain milestones. Over the next 10 years, the Tony Lumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program expects to support 10,000 startups and young businesses selected from across Africa who will ultimately create 1 million new jobs and add an expected $10 billion in annual revenues to Africa's economy. So the upsides, why should you be interested in sourcing money from the Tony Olumilu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program? One key upside is that the program is only open to entrepreneurs who are citizens or legal residents of any African country. So it's also open to new startups and existing for-profit businesses operating in any sector, right? And then in terms of the downside, something to watch out for when it comes to the Tony Lumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program is that the $5,000 provided by this program may not be enough for your funding needs. However, the training, mentoring, and networking opportunities that come with participating in this program can be very valuable. And uh, several alumni of this program have successfully, um, have, have several uh, alumni of our program have successfully won the $5,000 prize from the TEEP program. The fourth funding source I want to talk about is the CDC Group, which is now known as British International Investment. The CDC Group, which is now known as British International Investment, was founded in 1948 and is one of the longest active investors in businesses and projects across Africa. The CDC Group is the UK's development finance institution and is wholly owned by the UK government's Department for International Development, DFID. To date, the CDC Group has made investments in 681 businesses in Africa, and its portfolio of investments is valued at over £7 billion as at 2021. The CDC Group specializes in development finance, 
emerging market investments, private equity investing, microfinance, and debt finance. The organization is focused on impact and growth businesses in sectors like manufacturing, agribusiness, infrastructure, financial institutions, construction, health, and education sectors. In November 2013, the CDC Group made an 18.1 million investment into Ferronia, an agricultural production and processing company that's involved in oil palm plantations and arable farming in the, De- in the Democratic Republic of Congo, the DLC. In 2019, the CDC Group invested $50 million in Aqua Power, which is a power developer responsible for building the 100 megawatt Redstone Concentrated Solar Power Project in South Africa. So if you're interested in raising funds from the CDC, why should you be interested, really? Now, one major upside is that the CDC group makes big investments and can provide upwards of $10 million in capital to a single project or business. Now, this is good news if your business or project is a capital-intensive venture. In terms of a downside, something to look out for, that would be that, you know, because the CDC group makes large investments, it is very careful about the businesses and projects it chooses to invest in. So as a result, your business must have a risk profile that is acceptable to the CDC group if you plan to attract their funding. Now, inside our fundraising program for entrepreneurs, you will learn how to identify and mitigate the seven critical risks investors typically look out for before they decide to invest in a business or project. By improving your risk profile, you know, several of our students have been able to convince previously difficult investors and raise thousands of dollars in the process. The fifth source of funding I would like to share with you is the African Development Foundation, the ADF. Now, the African Development Foundation is an independent U.S. government agency established by the United States Congress to invest directly in grassroots uh, enterprises and social entrepreneurs in Africa. Now, the African Development Foundation focuses its investments on businesses and projects that increase incomes, revenues, and jobs by promoting self-reliance and market-based solutions to poverty. The foundation provides funding in the form of grants and also supports entrepreneurs with capacity building assistance and opportunities to develop, grow, and scale their enterprises. Currently, the ADF invests in three major areas. The first is entrepreneurship and job creation. The second is off-grid renewable energy. And the third is agriculture and food security. In the last 10 years, the ADF has invested $16 million in 170 businesses in Nigeria. It has invested $15 million in 166 businesses in Kenya. $15 $15 million in Zambia, $12 million in Mali, $10 million in Senegal, and $10 million in Cote d'Ivoire, among other African countries. So what exactly is the upside? Why should you be interested in sourcing funds from the ADF? Now, one key upside is that the ADF gives grants from as little as $10,000 up to and above $200,000. Now, this can be very valuable free money for a business because it's a grant and it's money that you can use to start, grow or expand your business or project. Now, in terms of a downside, if there's something you need to watch out for, that would be that funding from the ADF is restricted to its focus sectors of entrepreneurship and job creation, off-grid renewable energy and agriculture and food security. Now, as a result, it will be difficult to attract funding if your business or project does not lie within these areas of interest. The sixth source of funding I'd like to talk to you about is the Acumen Fund. The Acumen Fund is a non-profit impact investment fund that was incorporated in 2001 with seed capital from the Rockefeller Foundation, Cisco Systems Foundation, and three individual philanthropists. 
Now, the Acumen Fund invests in entrepreneurs and businesses across Sub-Saharan Africa who have the capacity and the capability to bring sustainable solutions to big problems. Specifically, the Acumen Fund invests in two types of businesses. The first type is early stage companies whose products and services enable the poor to transform their lives. And the second type of businesses that the Acumen Fund is interested in are established high potential companies with scalable solutions that deliver social and financial returns. In addition to funding, the Acumen Fund supports the companies it invests in with tools, networks, technical assistance, and strategic guidance needed to succeed and scale into long-term solutions. The Acumen Fund invested $1.8 million in Sproxil, a startup in Ghana that provides a consumer product verification service to help buyers avoid purchasing counterfeit products. In 2012, Ethio Chicken, a major poultry producer in Ethiopia, raised over $1 million from the Acumen Fund to expand and scale its business in the country. In total, companies that have raised funding from the Acumen Fund have gone on to raise over $500 million in additional funding. Now, let's talk about the upside. Why should you be interested in the Acumen Fund? One major upside is that the Acumen Fund provides large amounts of patient capital, usually above $1 million, to businesses that have solutions or products that can positively impact humanity. Another upside of the Acumen Fund is that in addition to the funding you receive, you also get valuable non-financial benefits from Acumen's proprietary tools, from its networks, from its technical assistance, and strategic guidance. There's also some downside, and the, 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 one, the one downside you need to watch out for would be that the Acumen Fund can be quite picky about the kind of businesses it invests in. Therefore, to stand out, you need to be really good at understanding the unique value proposition of your business and be able to pitch yourself, your ideas, and your business to the panel of judges. The seventh source of funding I want to talk about is FinFund. So FinFund is a state-owned development financier that invests in profitable businesses in developing countries. It is owned by the government of Finland and is based in Helsinki. Every year, FinFund makes between 20 and 30 new investments worth up to 250 million euros. At the end of 2020, FinFund's investments and commitments were over over a trillion euros in 53 countries. That's over a trillion euros. So FinFund provides different types of financial investments and support to businesses operating in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. This includes equity capital, long-term investment loans, mezzanine finance, and expertise on how to invest in developing markets. In 2007, FinFund invested 2.5 million euros in Africado, uh, Tanzania's first commercial producer of international grade avocado fruits. And in 2016, FinFund invested $15 million in the 80 megawatt peat fired Hakan Quantum Power Plant project in Rwanda. Now, what are the upsides? Why should you be interested in FinFund? One major upside is that FinFund only invests in developing countries. So, this focus significantly favors entrepreneurs and businesses operating in many parts of Africa. The second key upside is that FinFund can also provide long-term funding that doesn't put pressure on businesses and gives them time and space to grow. But of course, there are downsides. These are some things to watch out for. One downside would be that FinFund only invests in ventures that are commercially viable and can make a profit. As a result, non-profit organizations cannot access funding from FinFund. Another thing to watch out for is that the fund prefers to exclusively focus on critical sectors like clean energy, sustainable forestry, financial services, and agriculture.
The eighth funding source is Leapfrog Investments. Leapfrog Investments is a private investment firm that invests in high growth companies in emerging markets. The firm's investments have an annual growth rate more than 26% and its companies reach approximately 220 million consumers, primarily in Africa and Asia. Founded in 2007 by Dr. Andy Cooper on his trademark Profit with Purpose philosophy, Leapfrog Investments was ranked by Fortune magazine as one of the top five companies to change the world alongside Apple and Novartis. In 2016, Leapfrog invested $22 million in Good Life Pharmacy, a retail pharmacy chain in East Africa. And in 2017, Leapfrog made a major equity investment of $180 million in Enterprise Group, a provider of insurance, life cover, and pension products in Ghana. Now, what are the upsides? Why should you be interested in sourcing money from Leapfrog Investments? So, in addition to the equity it provides, Leapfrog also supports its partner companies in the areas of strategy, sales, product pricing, distribution, human resources, and several other key areas. And is there a downside? One thing to watch out for with Leapfrog is that Leapfrog only invests in companies involved in financial services and healthcare, with a focus on insurance, pensions, finance, and banking sectors, and diagnostics, pharmaceutical, and medical products. The ninth funding source I want to talk about is Y Combinator. Y Combinator is an American accelerator that was launched in March 2005 and has consistently ranked as one of the top business accelerators in the world. Every year, Y Combinator selects dozens of startups from across the world in two batches, a summer batch and a winter batch. The selected companies receive up to $500,000 in funding and also get business advice and international exposure. As of 2020, Y Combinator had invested in over 1,650 companies with a combined valuation of over $80 billion. Some famous Y Combinator alumni startups include Dropbox, Airbnb, Stripe, Reddit, Optimizely, Zenefits, Docker, DoorDash, Mixpanel, and Heroku. In Africa, Y Combinator has invested in a growing number of promising startups. Y Combinator invested about $120,000 for a 7% stake in CowrieWise, Paystack, Helium Health, Kudi, and several other African startups. Now, the upside of Y Combinator. Why should you be interested in Y Combinator? A key upside is that Y Combinator doesn't just provide funding to startups. It also provides very valuable opportunities through training, networking, and introduction to strategic partners and potential investors. For example, Paystack, a Nigerian startup and alumnus of the Y Combinator program, was acquired for $200 million by investors in 2020. Now, in terms of a downside or something to watch out for, that would be that Y Combinator typically only focuses on technology or technology-enabled businesses. Also, getting into Y Combinator is a very competitive and selective process. In 2021, one of our members and the co-founder of Meco Autotech was accepted into the Y Combinator summer program. And just one year after graduating from the Y Combinator program, his startup raised over $2 million from a group of investors. So inside our fundraising program for entrepreneurs, you will learn how to package and position your business in a way that improves your chances of catching the eyes of very selective platforms like Y Combinator. The 10th funding source I want to talk about is the Emerging Africa Infrastructure Fund. So the Emerging Africa Infrastructure Fund is a public-private partnership funded by the governments of the UK, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and a number of private banks. The purpose of the EAIF 
is to lend to businesses that create, improve, or expand infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa. The fund lends to infrastructure projects mainly owned, managed, and operated by private sector businesses. The EAIF funds projects that are either wholly owned in Africa or joint venture businesses or international businesses expanding into Africa or entering African markets for the first time. Some examples of key projects funded by the EAIF are the $35 million loan to Indorama in Nigeria for the construction of a fertilizer plant, a $21 million facility to Kigali Water for the construction of a bulk water production facility in Rwanda, and a $17 million loan to Akuokita for the construction of a 50 megawatt solar power project in Mali. Now, what are the upsides? Why should you be interested in raising funds from the EAIF? A key upside is that the EAIF is a specialist fund that mostly invests in infrastructure projects in Africa and can provide very large amounts of funding in the multi-millions of dollars. In terms of the downside, one thing to watch out for is that you know, the, the, the only significant downside to the EAIF is that it has a preference for large projects that require significant amounts of capital. So the EAIF only focuses on giving out loans and debt funding for projects that it invests in. So let's recap. In this video, I have shared 10 out of 100 organizations that provide funds to businesses and projects in Africa. We covered Seed Stars Africa. We, we looked at the African Women's Development Fund, the AWDF, and then the Tony Elumelu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. We looked at the CDC Group, which is now British International Investments. And then we talked about the African Development Foundation, the ADF. And then I told you about the Acumen Fund, Fin Fund, Leapfrog Investments, Y Combinator, and the Emerging Africa Infrastructure Fund. Inside our fundraising program for entrepreneurs, you will have access to the complete catalog of 100 funding organizations that have been profiled and vetted by us. Are you looking to raise between $10,000 and $1 million or more for your business, project, or nonprofit? Have you been trying to raise money on your own without much success? We can help you overcome this problem so you can finally raise enough money to start, grow, or turn around your business. Since 2015, members and alumni of our program have used creative strategies to raise over $5 million in grants, equity, and debt funding for different types of businesses and projects. Are you ready to learn and apply the strategies we are going to show you? Get three days free access to our exclusive program and join other entrepreneurs who had successfully raised between $10,000 and $1 million for their businesses and projects. Join us at smallstarter.com slash 777 or check out the link in the description below. See you inside.